Hello, beautiful Taurus friends. Welcome to 2022. Happy New Year. I hope this is the best year that you've experienced in your life to date. You have an incredible reading in front of you. Let's jump in. And I want to thank each and every one of you who have supported me, subscribed, liked, shared, commented. I just want to thank you so much for a stellar 2021. Your overall energy, Taurus, is it's time to breathe out. You have had a wild kind of a year, and it is really time to relax, take a deep breath, and to really assess the year, and that is exactly what you're doing. You look like you have really given a lot of thought to what you want for this year. Look at the energy that you have my dear friend, this is a childhood friend who is still with you today. We can see this beautiful creature, this very pretty girl, riding a deer that now has very big antlers. This is a friend that you've had in your life for a very long, long time. And you are going to reunite with this person or you're going to spend some very quality time with them in 2022. For many of you, you are in a period of healing. When we look at the Lady of Sorrows, it looks as though the past few years, maybe even up to seven, have been very challenging for you. And we see that you've had, you know, a a fair amount of pain, remorse, regret, a period of time in your life that you are healing from now. Grasshopper spirit is the spirit of taking the leap of faith. Absolutely, you are in the energy of the Trinity. You are blessed at this time. And we see rejuvenating rain, clear the past, heal the present, you are going to do that with a lot of excitement, a lot of help from old friends, and by taking the bold step into the future. We, this is a tarot scope, and so I look at it from the wheels of the astrology chart as to which card and what, the, what it means. So when we look at your first house, of your physical body, you're very balanced. Many of you have found a balance in exercise, lifestyle choices, whatever was out of balance, whatever uh, previously needed to be balanced out. 2022, you come into the year, you are standing tall, you are courageous. The card of justice is Libra energy. You are absolutely about to move forward into beautiful relationships, contracts, moving forward very swiftly, especially in the area of life of partnership, whether it's business partners, love partners. It can be anybody that gives you good advice. It can be lawyers, doctors, anybody who takes care of your health or fiduciary responsibility of money. You, this is a powerhouse year for you. This is absolutely a kickoff that is unprecedented, I feel, in your life previously. Six of Wands in your seventh house of partnership. This is Leo Energy. Great success. The choices you make for those that you align with in some sort of legal binding agreement. Again, that's marriage partners. So I feel very much that you may meet someone this year or you may actually become engaged to somebody if you already know them. This is a year of victory. It is a year of being out in the world large, very large and in charge, and really getting the kudos, the, the recognition that you deserve. And this is a victory, whether it be, a, you know, a legal situation that's to do with a lawsuit, or whether it is partnership of any kind that has a legal overtone to it. When we look at your money house, you are beating the drum, fame and fortune, 
King of Wands energy, fiery energy. You have fire in your belly. You're going to have a stellar year as you go forward. You have the ability strategically to get exactly what you want in your earned income. It looks as though for many of you, you may be self-employed. If you're not, many of you will strike out in that direction. But this is a fixed sign. Great stability for you. This is the strength card, if you will. This is that Leo energy of positivity. You have it in your seventh house. Your perception by the world at large is that you are absolutely a winner. People want to hire you. You have a very prosperous year in 2020. The Knight of Swords says you are moving forward rapidly in terms of your investments, loans, anything that you are wanting to improve in terms of maybe credit scores. Look at this. You just start waving this beautiful wand. You clear the path for a future ahead that allows you to capitalize on investments. So you have great clarity. You may have a tremendous offer or a chance to become part of a partnership also that will allow Allow you to increase your passive income as well as your active income, your investments. So it's very exciting and you will read the fine print very carefully. In the area of your neighborhood and where you live, well here we have Taurus energy. Here you are Taurus in your reading. Many of you are feeling that you like where you live. It feels comfortable to you. You've made a beautiful home. This is a card that really speaks to the fact that your neighbors love you. You have a very, very good situation. Uh, we also see that if you sign a contract, because that is Gemini overlay on that, for, so for Taurus Risings, what we see is that for those of you who marry, you will marry very well. Hierophant is a traditional uh, contract or marriage energy, but it also in your third house of your neighborhood speaks to the stability, the fact that the value of your home may ri rise rapidly, but you are building and feathering your nest even further. Look at the Ten of Pentacles, happily ever after, in terms of creating a family or a group of friends or a support system that speaks to, uh, it could even be foreign people, foreign travel. The Ten of Pentacles is all about stability, money, Virgo energy, lots of great abundant energy. This is a legacy marriage. You may find yourself uh, traveling a lot in a foreign environment, but again, you could be doing business with people from other countries, other cultures, other ethnicities, but it also speaks to the fact that you might be called upon to publish, teach, you could also even teach at a college, a university. The Ten of Pentacles speaks to investment in the long-term well-being of your life. It means also for those of you, you uh, who would like to go back to school, you'll have the funding to do it. Fantastic energy for you. Legacy energy once again. A strong and beautiful building block that, you know, is, is often missing in our lives. But for you absolutely incredible energy. When we look at your fourth house of your relationships, your home, your hearth, your mother, your roots, we look at the Eight of Swords. Many of you, you are being protected by a guardian angel, and many of you are closing down a period in your life, maybe from childhood, where you had some sorrow. You're really coming into your own. You're healing. You're stepping forward with this beautiful spirit. You're kind of putting a lid on the old wounds, the things that held you back. You've grown these beautiful wings to fly, to break out of the cage. 
you know, right now you have restricted yourself. There's times that you've told yourself when you've mothered yourself that you were not all that you could be. And you are releasing that energy, Taurus. You are coming into this absolutely great Sagittarius energy. Adventure, striking out at peace with your life, happy with who you are, understanding the value of who you are, and never again allowing anyone or any energy to make you feel trapped. Temperance is you stepping into the world with faith, with confidence, with good fortune, good will, and it speaks volumes in your career. It looks as though also someone that you may have worked for in the past with whom you made a lot of money, with whom you earned a lot of money, is going to approach you again to join them in business, in your career house, your 10th house of public standing. You are highly sought after, you are highly desired with a beautiful, peaceful dove here of healing. When we look at your fifth house of romance, two of wands, you are at a crossroads. A decision needs to be made. You're holding the whole world in your hands. You have options. And when we look at your fifth house of romance, it looks as though you find love. The opposite house of the fifth house of creativity, children, romance is the Ace of Cups. For many of you with grown children, you will truly become um, their new best friend. The Ace of Cups also says that a friend of long standing or somebody that you've known in a group activity or endeavor is going to be your new love interest, your new love partner. You absolutely love the people that you are surrounding yourself with. It's a beautiful time of new love being birthed with friends, with family, with career, with money. It's a time when you're going to feel so abundant. You will make all the right choices. The Two of Wands is being at the crossroads. You're going to make beautiful choices, and you're going to be in places where you feel like you're with people who really treat you the best. When we look at your sixth house of health in everyday life, Two of Swords, it does look like you are thinking about making a change, but you're not ready to make it yet. The Six of Swords is really just minding your business, really not looking for anything big, new, or sudden. You're taking your time a day at a time. And when we look at your 12th house, look at your creative energy. You are behind the scenes in a way that nobody sees you creating this abundance, this wealth. You may be working out more, you may be acquiring a new wardrobe, but you are building a life that is absolutely stunning. It's stellar, but you're not talking about it. You're just going on about your business. You're keeping very quiet. You're just in this energy of being very comfortable. You know, almost being your own best friend also and understanding the tremendous value that you bring to everyone that you know, everyone's life that you touch. When we look at the energy of the El Goliath Tarot, this is a shadow deck, so it usually represents a sticky situation or something you found challenging this year. So let's look and see, or in 2021, let's see how this continues to unfold for you in 2022. We have beautiful, the Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. Behind the scenes, you are a powerhouse. You are smelling the roses. You have. You are ha very grateful for everything that you've received in life. That love and that gratitude is emanating this beautiful energy of seed, uh, planting seeds, gathering petals after you plant seeds. Just great energy. That energy of hundreds of seedlings are going out. 
you look like you have slayed a dragon over the past year. I feel with the Queen or the Lady of Sorrows, you have slayed a dragon. You are a little bit afraid that you that whatever this challenge is, it looks like a Davy and Goliath situation, whether it's a habit you want to break, whether it's a situation that you're in, what we see for you, it's Scorpio energy. Uh, the Five of Swords is very much the energy also of Aquarius, Enlightenment. And we see the Ace of Wands. You absolutely have a new enthusiasm. You feel you've taken yourself out of the situation. You have a victory. That's Aries energy, the Ace of Wands, fiery energy. And you are in a place of being very... Uh, very contemplative. You are really contemplating with this beautiful Virgo energy, seeking answers from within, looking at your life, doing a review, and just striking out completely on your own in a very happy way. So whatever it is that came from last year, you have conquered the situation, the challenge, whatever that represents to you, you have ascended when we look at relationships around you you may have a young woman a daughter of Pentacles which is usually a younger person page of Pentacles energy somebody who might be a little bit immature someone who is trying to seek wise counsel from you this is Aries energy we see that the Three of Swords looks as though there's some sort of difficulty with your relationship with this person because of a third party. Now, oftentimes when we have adult children and they start to have relationships, we can actually see the future better than they can. We're older, we're wiser. And so what I'm seeing here is that you may find yourself in a situation where you have great clarity, about a younger family member or a friend or you know somebody that you know personally you see with great clarity that they need to see things more clearly they need to heal some old wounds and that's what i see six of swords energy moving forward with grace with dignity you're helping someone to heal something you're helping to heal a part a third party situation in which there has been some sort of falling out or difficult situation. Tell us, Spirit, what is that third party situation? Tell us more about that. We're looking for a clarifier for the Three of Swords energy. The Eight of Swords, beautiful energy. It means that whatever person that is has been hurt in this situation by someone else, you see them taking action to start something brand new, the Fool card. The Eight of Swords is reversed, something that this person ignored before at their own peril, at their own risk. You know, again, you could see things and now you see the person that you were worried about who was dealing with an immature energy who hurt them very deeply. What you're seeing is that they've come into their own, they have matured, and now, you know, they were all up in their head, but now you see a level of maturity that you've never seen with this person before. That is just a stunning way to start the new year, but that is your entire outlook for the year of 2022. Love you all. Bye-bye.